Hey everybody, this is Manny's Garage. This is our first video and we're going to show you the Bend Pack HD9XW unpack and install. The setup we got was the 110 power unit with the driver front post setup. So when you order you'll need to determine whether you want to do the driver front post or the rear passenger side post install. When it comes in, it comes in for the package that I got. It was a complete setup. We got the package deal, so we ordered the drip tray, aluminum ramps, caster kit, the jack platform, the extra wide one in this case for the 9XW since that's a wider lift. Most of the components are within that main pelletized setup that you saw was loaded onto our trailer with the forklift. We also had a shorter trailer than needed. We didn't think it was going to extend past, but it worked out. And the two additional boxes that came in, one was the drip trays and the other was the power unit. Everything else is pretty much on this pallet. So we started breaking it down and we found different layers of parts, a few boxes in there, broke it down a little further. And even within the platforms, there was more uh, there were more parts in there we started laying everything out the four different posts one of them has the power unit install platform for our movement of the platforms we had hydraulic lifts that we had available around the, the garage to help with the picking them up it was three of us, but it's definitely helpful to use the the lifts or jacks. Lifting these things are pretty heavy, so we don't want to get hurt. Here you see all the different parts as they were starting to get uh, broken out of the boxes. Cables, screws, mounts, brackets, ladders, ramps, all of that listed. Once we got everything out, we started building. First step calls for the install of the the slide blocks. So we installed those. This is what it what they look like at the end. They allow for the safety locks to work. Started putting those in place. Groove to the outside, the cross tubes. And then we started examining which of the cross tubes goes to the front and which goes to the back. For the setup I used, we had small windows on the front driver's side and the larger windows along the rear driver's side. You see what they look like here. The diagrams don't really show the difference. Those are the small windows. So that would have been the driver front for me. The larger windows towards the back. They're on the same side because they they assist with the cabling where the cylinder goes. That's where the cables are run through. They're on the same side of the lift. But one's on the front, one's on the back. So we identified the right one, slid that into the two front posts, and then we got ladders set up. Started putting those in place, and then we started bolting those down. The instructions will show you that they actually slide through the, the slide blocks and you're going to use some hardware to get the caps uh, secured. This is the hardware you'll need. A couple of hex bolts, spacers, nuts and washers. Nothing's labeled in the kit, so hopefully you find use in this video to help identify some of the parts if you use it for reference. So what we did is we went ahead and just hand tightened initially once we got everything in place and then once the posts were raised we went ahead and used some um, like shims or a spacer at the bottom of the ladders to begin to somewhat tighten the stuff down. We were going to need to level it later.
once we got that done we started raising our pulse with the cross tubes in place and the cross tubes you should have them secured at about the same height we went with just a second lock location built the second one put our ladders in nuts washers and we got that up Again, we use the spacer and tighten down the ladders. You want to do that now because once you start getting cables in place, they start getting in the way. You want to disengage the one set of safety locks. You pull up on the cross beam tube, push in on the lock and it disengages. The air locks remain in place. Those are your, your other safety locks. And then you want to remove the sheaves out of the tubes and platforms. So we went ahead and did that. Take a look at the instruction manual if, if you are considering different installation options. For mine, the hydraulic cylinder goes on the same side where the windows are so we knew that that platform was going to be on the driver's side went ahead and removed all the sheaves the safety pins we just secured them nearby so we had them available for reinstall This is a time lapse of us rolling in the first platform. This is a passenger side platform without the hydraulic cylinder. We used car dollies to roll them in and a regular hydraulic jack to help us with lifting it up. Once done, this is what our setup looked like. And moved on to installing the second platform. This was a little easier since it was already on on jacks. It went a little smoother even though it was heavier, but the idea is the same. You wanna line up uh, your platforms, make sure that the hydraulic cylinder is on the side that you're gonna need it on. Usually that's gonna be where the power unit is at. Most of the lines will connect directly to it on that side. And the opposite end towards the rear larger windows cross beam. Once done, that's what it looks like. At this point, what we did was level out the platforms onto the ladder itself before running any cables. Once you run the cables and you run the hydraulic lift, it begins to move the, those platforms. So we wanted to get a good level in place before we started making any adjustments. The instruction also indicates to install a runway bracket. These are the bolts that we found for it. For my setup, it went on the passenger side right about the middle of the runway platform. So at this point, we took an inventory of remaining parts. This is what it looks like. It's pretty much the only hardware left after the work so far. A couple of hoses, some fittings, some brackets, air valve, and some springs. And I'll walk you through what the ad installation looked like on our end. And this is what the runway bracket or strap looks like once installed. It's a good idea to start letting out hydraulic oil. So I used DT25 hydraulic fluid. 
instructions call for checking for utility rails you're going to need to access that that port there for the installation of the flex to be on the power post side this is the runway rails there should be nothing on the outside of the platforms once installed So we install the flex tube next. Set of pliers helped us tighten that down. It's plastic so we didn't crank down too much. We moved on to the cables. Four of them are identified by the measurement or the length of each one of those cables, but not by letter. So I went ahead and wrote the letter as referenced in the instruction manuals, A through D, for each one of the four cables used. And then I also marked the cable itself with a Sharpie so that I could ID them once those tags are getting moved. For my setup, cable A was going to be on the rear driver's side cable B on the rear passenger side and then cable D on the front passenger side cable C on the driver side front and each one of those cables has a designated location on the hydraulic bracket so as we were moving forward we want to make sure that everything lined up correctly and I'll show you what that looked like once done Cables required to be running in pairs. Once you get the sheaves in, you have to line both of them up in the right grooves. So we started the install with cables A and C. Started laying those out under the, the different runways and feeding them through the tubes. As we got closer to linking everything together, it calls for extending the hydraulic cylinder tried using air as recommended in the instructions but had no, no luck with it so we used a pretty hefty strap to pull the hydraulic cylinder out without causing any damage and we had success with that we also found that hooking on right behind that nut was the best if we were to hook up behind the, the plate it wouldn't have given us any free space to kind of uh, work the cables into those safety grooves and into the final groove We started running the cables through the sheaves at the cross beams and into the posts. Once into the posts, they're supposed to go through the different pins there. So the first one was already removed. We had to push the cable through the two locks there and up through the small sheave at the top. It's a little tight. We just kind of worked that cable through uh, out towards us and once we were able to pull on it, fed it all the way up through the top where the cap is and moved on to the next one. The first cable we installed would have been the driver rear cable where the rear windows are for the dual sheave. The next one we worked was the cable labeled C. Once those are back in place, you can reinstall the sheaves in the safety pin, making sure that the cable runs above the safety pin, very important. This is what that configuration looked like for us. And then you can install the sheaves under the runway with the cable fed through correctly. Depending on the side or post you're working on, some of these will, will loop out of the post into the cross beam into one sheave and then around another before it goes back to the cylinder bracket. They're pretty lengthy, so you want to make sure that as you're running them, they're accurate. We verified all of our uh, 
cables were in the right locations with what the instructions said and they lined out. Once we started running the longest cable into the passenger front area, we followed the same strategy, fed it through the cross tube into the post. We made sure to stay on top of the, the brackets. Some of the cables uh, will run on one side of the cylinder and the other set will run on the opposite end of the cylinder under the runway platform. Once uh, they're worked in to the hydraulic bracket, that's what they look like. That's the little safety bracket there to keep them in place. So they're difficult to work in if the cylinder is not extended all the way and there's not much wiggle room there. So uh, we gave ourselves plenty of room to work in, labeled our cables, and routed them as the instructions indicated. This is what the four already installed look like. So when we went to install the airlines, there was three T's that had to be installed, two in the front by the power unit, and the last on the rear driver's side. The airlines are run through the flex tube and onto the safety locks. You'll have fittings already on the safety locks that you'll have to use. So you just remove them, and as you're running your lines, you run them through the holes in the different cross beams and the platforms and into the tubing that's welded onto the cross beams. Once we were able to get that done, I'll show you a picture of what that looked like. This is as we finish running one side. It's quarter inch poly tubing going into the safety lock. Used the fittings, tightened everything down. Worked our way to the power post side as well. Made sure to get that T in there. And hooked up the second safety lock. One T goes into the runway, which feeds the main line into the flex tube. We gave ourselves enough slack just to work it into the control unit later. We wired the rest of it and then moved on to the hydraulic return line. It's also the same type of tubing, so use whatever is left. And we had some difficulty identifying the different fittings. Again, none of them are labeled. We found that on the cylinder itself, the one with the O-ring is placed on the power unit and not on the massive cylinder the one with no o-ring is the one that's uh, indicated for the hydraulic cylinder you remove a cap and place the fitting in and that's what hooks up to the hydraulic hose that goes to the power post so we ran our hydraulic hose through and into the cylinder once we ran it into the flex tube we left that side kinda just disconnected for now until we had everything set up on the power post so we moved to that next so we had to match everything up on the instructions with the descriptions and the different brackets we had a, an angle two bracket there a zero angle bracket for the air valve and one of the main large brackets that kinda holds everything in place bolts for each so I'll show you what that looked like for us once we were done there's a couple of different install combinations you can use here. I'll show you a couple of different considerations that are available. So here we had on the power post the zero angle bracket for the air valve first and then the long drop down bracket, the rubber mat, and then our power unit. It worked out pretty good for us. On the opposite side we had to install the bolts in the opposite direction. There wasn't enough space to work them in the same way. So that zero angle bracket is for the air valve. Once installed 
you'll be able to fit a, a coupling on the bottom of fitting for your air holes whatever it is that, that you're using we matched up ours for our compressor in our system and uh, there's a fitting provided for the top of that valve that goes to the hydraulic cylinder on the power unit itself and the hydraulic hose there's a couple of different setups the one setup that was already that the unit came in with didn't work out for my installation so I had to change it around there was a cap on one side of the power port there's two potential power outs on on this hydraulic power unit none of those configurations match mine so uh, the closest one would have been the top row where I had two power outs but none of them showed the hydraulic lever so I went ahead and removed the cap there was a plastic cap on one which the f would have been kind of a space for the fitting I moved it on the opposite end uh, this is where the fitting was so I took that plastic fitting out and I took the cap from the other side and installed it there and then I moved uh, I installed my fitting on the side where I needed it close to my uh, flex tube this is what that looks like again this is the fitting with the o-ring on it and then I installed the hydraulic return brass fitting there so you have your power out and your hydraulic return so we made sure to mark them so that we wouldn't confuse them the other flex tubing is the air and as uh, air is fed into the system you push on that valve and it releases the locks large bolts are for the air valve and the small bolts are for the bracket holding the flex tube we used the setup to with the top of the bracket uh, above you can actually use a a different configuration and drop it um, I think had we gone with that it, it probably would have given us a little bit more slack um, but it forces into that kind of awkward angle for the hydraulic valve it works it doesn't cause any problems it just it's not as cosmetically appealing but we left it if we find a need for changing it out we'll do it on the next run this is what the completed install looks like the remaining hardware is what's left here a few springs and some greasing uh, fittings some bars for the ramps and wheel stops at the end so I'll show you how we install these springs they go on the safety locks as an additional safety measure not required but they are highly recommended short one goes on the pneumatic uh, cylinder and the other one goes on the other lock that's there you see how each will have a hole on the top so you would loop one end through the top hole and the other end onto the bolt there short one goes on the cylinder long one goes on the other lock once we did that we went ahead and installed the grease fittings that's what it looks like once done springs in fittings in and we went ahead and greased everything up at the same time there's also uh, fittings that go on the runways those need to start kinda getting lined out and leveled out so we started doing that next make sure if you haven't put oil in do that we went ahead and dropped our lift and started leveling everything out that was extremely lengthy but once everything was lined up we were comfortable with the lock setup and ready to roll pretty much gets it to the end and this is a working lift now ready to go I hope you guys enjoyed the video found it useful uh, this is our experience and our kind of experience with the manual as well and uh, any comments feel free to add them down below like subscribe and share we'll try to get more videos off for you guys thank you